Howdy, howdy, howdy. My name is Anashi Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the last episode, I believe we read the Supercomputer, Blood Spruce, Mnemonic Meme, The Summer of 48, and uh, there, the, the Maybe They're Monsters. I keep almost saying there may be monsters, like they may be giants or whatever. Also, I feel like I'm not saying this one right. Mnemonic? I'm not sure. In this episode, we're going to be checking out the self replacing cake. The Tattered Farmer, the Russian Crystal Ball, the Abyssal Fluid, and the War Criminals. Abyssal Fluid sounds like it's something that's supposed to be going on a car like Brake Fluid or Power Steering Fluid, but it's probably... It's probably not. Um, let's see. Check out the cake. What? What? Why? Okay. Um... Each recurrence of SCP-871 is to be maintained within a separate locked concrete cell on a metal platter permanently affixed to the surface of an immovable wooden table. Each cell housing a recurrence of 871 is to be monitored on a 24-hour basis via a closed-circuit camera with individual feeds checked every 15 minutes. Upon creation of an instance of SCP-871, three disposable dudes are to be escorted by armed guards to its cell where they are to be sealed with the instance and induced to consume it. No more than one hour may be spent performing this task. In cases where additional motivation is needed, the termination of one of the disposable dudes assigned to an instance of 871 is authorized. What is the cake made of that they need to do that to make them eat a cake? Upon completion of the consumption of an instance, no participants may enter the cell until both they and the room have been thoroughly searched to confirm that no portions remain. The platter, table, and room are then to be cleaned in preparation for the next instance. Disposable dudes who prove cooperative in the consumption of an instance may volunteer to participate in additional consumptions. Personnel exhibiting exceptional usefulness may have their monthly termination postponed. Such personnel are under no circumstances to be allowed to interact with any other SCP object. No desserts of any kind are be served on site at any facility hosting a recurrence of 871. Description SCP-871 is a collection of 237 cakes. Instances of 871 vary widely in appearance and size, covering the entire range of foods described by humans as cake. The smallest observed instance of 871 was a miniature cupcake with a mass of 15 grams. The largest, the largest yet was a 22 kilogram bam cushion measuring 2 meters in length. What is that? Okay, it's a German variety of spit cake. Why was it 2 meters in length? When any instance of 871 is consumed by a human or a collection of humans, it is replaced approximately 24 hours afterwards with a similar cake. This cake will appear on a flat surface in the vicinity of the location where the previous instance was eaten. If any of these cakes is substantially damaged through any means other than being eaten by a human, including being eaten by a non-human animal, it will be replaced instantaneously. Instances replaced in this manner maintain the schedule of the original instance. The mechanism by which the instances are replaced is currently unknown. Individual recurrences of 871 have been observed to mutate over time, varying in minor characteristics between each instance with larger changes occurring roughly 5% of their replacements. No deleterious effects have been observed to result from the consumption of 871, even in cases where several instances have been consumed, except, excepting, in those, uh, excepting those expectable from eating large amounts of cake. 871's danger originates in the consequences of an instance not being eaten. Any instance of 871 which is not consumed will cause a new cake to be created in its vicinity after 24 hours. While this is similar to its normal replacement behavior, the original instance will continue to exhibit the same properties, rep replicating if damaged, and continuing to replace itself every 24 hours. This behavior has been observed in all cases where more than 10% of the mass of an instance remained unconsumed. As there is no known mechanism for halting the replication, any uncontained instances could replicate exponentially, but quickly becoming unmanageable. No maintainable plans for the containment of more than 20,000 instances of 871 have yet been devised. It is estimated that an uncontrolled outbreak originated from a single instance would render the Earth uninhabitable within 80 days. So the reason it's Keter is because if you don't eat the cake, it'll just keep happening. Which would be like... And when they say exponentially, be like, okay, one cake becomes two cakes, two cakes becomes four cakes, four cakes becomes 16 cakes, and over and over and over, and 80 days later, which would mean they would double... Every eight, every every day, it would double. So, how many cakes would that be after eighty days? I'm not going to whip out the calculator app to figure it out because that's just time I probably don't really need to spend on it. But I am now very curious as to how many cakes would be caused after exponentially 
80 days when the cakes double every 24 hours that it would make life on Earth uninhabitable because of cake. More specifically, because if, it, if it's anything other than eating the cakes. I don't know why they can't just deploy the cake to help with countries that don't have enough food. I know it's not healthy, but they could try. But it's the foundation, and I don't think they care about humanity. They only care about this. So, 872 is the Tattered Farmer. The Tattered Farmer is safe and also a scarecrow. Is this another one of the... I think this was another one of the things from one of the apocalypses. Get out of here, Bert! I think that this dude showed up in one of the, um... One of the SCP sidestep videos about one of the apocalypses where they went and got him and had him raise the, uh... The field of pumpkin children and overtook the foundation in that area. But I could be wrong. Let's find out. When not in under controlled observation, 872 is to be kept in cold storage sector someplace. SCP-872 is to be kept two kilometers from any concentrated group of animals considered livestock at all times. When under controlled observation, a perimeter is to be established outside the observation area and research is to cease immediately in the event of an attempted containment breach. Ten members of security are to be present during controlled observation to enforce this. Controlled observation must be approved by one member of level 4 personnel. SCP-872 is an aged scarecrow outfitted with a tattered coat and hat measuring 3 meters tall and 10 centimeters wide. Is that... That's not very... Okay. 872 is composed of pine wood, splinters of which have not displayed its anomalous properties. When animals considered livestock, sheep, cows, chicken, etc., enter the area within 1.5 kilometers of 872, they are immediately affected by its anomalous properties. SCP-872 affected animals are extremely hostile to humans and will viciously assault any who approach them. A group of 872 affected sheep. Affected animals have been observed to utilize advanced maneuvers such as flanking and ambushing. Affected animals have also been observed to behave as if in an automated farm environment. Chickens will lay their eggs in easy to access areas. Sheep will attempt to remove wool from each other using their teeth. Cows have been observed to kill one cow each week and roughly separate its carcass into strips of meat. Each month, the animals will transport anything produced to the perimeter of 872's area of an influence and allow humans to remove it from the area. When removed from 872's area of influence, affected animals will immediately enter a vegetative state. This vegetative state is reversed when said animals are returned to its area of influence. Okay, so probably not the same scarecrow I was thinking of, but it could be. I don't know. Let's check out the Russian crystal ball. Ooh. It used to say safe, and it... Uh, now it is Euclid, and it used to say, Site-873 is kept in a secure room at Site-19. Revised C Containment Procedure Updates. Three wide-spectrum, uh, high-definition cameras shall be mounted in order to maintain 360-degree observation of 873 on a continual basis. Used to say, recorded video data shall be archived in the Foundation's secure network and access granted to any researcher with a clearance level, uh, clearance to or better upon research. Request, sorry. Physical examination and testing of 873 is permitted with written approval by level 3 or above. Revised. Containment procedure update. On blank blank 19 something, it used to say, until further notice, physical access to 873 as well as access to recorded video footage is restricted to researchers with direct approval of the site director. Now it says, blank blank 2000 something, until further notice, physical access as well as access to recorded video is restricted to level 4 researchers with 05 approval. And then it said, blank blank 2000 something, SCP-873 is to be permanently relocated to site blank and stored in a concrete lined vault at least 2000 meters below ground and at least 100 kilometers away from other SCP containment facility or human population center. Archives of video surveillance are to be encrypted to a secure, dedicated data warehouse with an access limited to level 4 and above. Any changes in mass, volume, or apparent refractive surf index must be reported immediately to O5 command. Okay. SCP-873 is a spherical object uh, 138 millimeters across with a detectable mass of 5.3 kilograms. It gives the appearance of being made of flawless glass or crystal, but all attempts to determine the material of its construction have been inconclusive. No attempt to remove a sample has been successful, and spectros uh, spectroscopic analysis has shown no absorption spectra that can be attributed to the object. Because of its anomalous properties, its refractive index can only be estimated. The object is transparent, but only 50% of photons entering the sphere will emerge, while a variable percentage of photons emerging from 873 originate from itself. This has been confirmed using quantum entanglement and a coherent light source. 
The photons emerging from 873 appear to originate from light striking an identical object displaced in both time and space from 873. This object has been designated 873 prime or 873 that. The anomalous effects of both 873 and prime seem identical in that an observer of prime will perceive 50% of photons striking 873 as being emitted from prime, whereas 873 emits 50% of protons striking prime. That's just prime. In addition, while the light emitted from 873 shows no anomalous properties in and of itself, the images provided are presented in strict reverse chronological order. To an observer for 873, it appears that Prime is moving backwards in time at a rate of exactly one second per second. The effect is mirrored for any observer of Prime who would perceive their images in 873 as progressing backwards in time at the same one-to-one -one ratio. Despite the differences in perception of time between observers of 873 and Prime, written communication has been possible. Unfortunately, information transfer is often hindered by a quantum interference rendering messages illegible. It has been theorized that the interference is a form of paradox censorship. Obs current observations and experiments are recording images from Prime in the possession of Dr. Ivan Blank, a physician to the court of Tsar Alexander I in 18-something. Addendum. Notes from 873. Let's see. It was purchased clandestinely from the archives of Blank University in uh, Vol Volgograd in Blank Blank 1992. Most paperwork in regards to the provenance of the object were lost in this transition between the USSR and the Russian Federation. The only document that the Foundation has recovered to date is a three-page typewritten letter from 1940-something from Redacted to Redacted, detailing the post-war return of the object to the university. According to Redacted, it was acquired by a 1927 exposition by the Soviet Academy of Sciences from Ivank natives in Siberia. No details about the nature, purpose, or participants of the expedition were given. Addendum, Incident I-8735. Okay, personnel involved, Redacted. 873 Observation Room Site Blank Description Since uh, June 27th, 19 something, 873 Prime has been locked in a con in a locked container producing no visual information. Beginning 1.15 in the afternoon on September the 12th, 19 something, the following imagery was recorded. Light abruptly appears entering from the top of the box Prime is inside as the lid is forcefully opened. Prime quickly rises into the hands of an unidentified man in dress appropriate to the 19th century Russian Empire. The man is apparently shouting something at Prime as he places it on a desk in front of him. Visible on the desk is an open strongbox and though uh, and through an open door a female corpse can be seen. The man holds up a partly crumbled piece of paper to Prime. One message has been uh, scrawled out illegibly and beneath that is one sentence reading, I know what you will do now. The man takes the message and unwrites it with a quill pen drawn from a holder next to Prime. He then violently scratches out the prior message revealing it. With shaking hands, he unsmooths the paper, leaving it a crumpled ball, and carefully places it on the floor next to the open door of the office. The man returns to the desk, closes the strong box, and walks backwards out of the room with it, stepping over the corpse in the doorway. The man runs backwards into the room, almost tripping on the corpse. He is holding a cane that shows signs of blood and hair stuck to it. He comes to an abrupt halt in the doorway and stares down at the dead woman for approximately six minutes. The man raises his cane, and the woman's corpse leaps up to meet it. The cane right rebounds off her head and shoulders three times before she's left standing, facing the man as he lowers the cane to his side with a visibly tre trembling hand. The man and woman engage in an animated discussion during which the crumpled paper jumps up from the ground into the man's left hand, where he uncrumples it during the discussion. As the conversation ends, the man appears less anxious and more relaxed. The man shuts the door on the woman and quickly backs to the, uh, to the desk, sits down, and holds the paper up to Prime, glancing back towards the door once. On the paper, the first message now legible reads, Dear friends, as you know, or will know, time proves such an unwelcome barrier. My wife has always been enthusiastic about our relationship with you. The glimpses of the future you have thus pr far provided have been redacted. I will apologize if she seems to have gone beyond the bounds of discretion. While you have been ever so explicit in requesting our secrecy, you shall find, as I have, that she is strong-willed and has her own opinions about such matters. However, it is her contact with Redacted that may at last provide me with an answer to the origins of this fascinating and terrifying object we share. Continued communication identifies the man as Dr. Ivan Blank. Directives from O5 have ordered communication to continue in an effort to gather intelligence about the origins of Prime. Communication with Dr. Ivan Blank is ongoing and will continue for the next blank years until the observed Prime's timeline reaches the point where Redacted presented Dr. Blank with Prime as a gift. Okay. Addendum 3, note on update to containment procedures. After extrapolating the, uh, back the timelines of 873 and Prime and assuming a constant 1 to 1 ratio, the point where both timelines becomes coincident is uh, 
12.17 in the morning something time, June 30th, 1908. Given that 873 was recovered in Siberia by a 1927 expedition by the Soviet Academy of Sciences, and such an expedition in 1927 was first recorded on site investigations of Redacted, can almost be almost certain that it is not a coincidence. So it is unknown if Redacted was the source of the anomalous properties of 873, or if 873 was the cause of Redacted. It is recommended that containment procedures and object classification are updated accordingly. Request granted. I am not 100% sure what that was, since it was redacted weirdly. But moving on. To find out what the abyssal fluid is. It's Euclid. Overhead view of a pool of inactive abyssal fluid. Alright. While not undergoing experimentation, 874 is to be kept in a container such that no horizontal volume of the substance is shallower than 5 centimeters. The fluid must be in constant motion, such as being stirred. With the Foundation's current supply of 874, this is to be a cylindrical steel vat of radius 7 meters and height 10 meters. While 874 is under study, no non-disposable dues are to be within 5 meters of the liquid. Any lab in which it is studied should be equipped with a winch system of no less than blank 1000 horsepower and with steel rope of 5 centimeters thickness. All personnel who have been immersed in 874 in its active state should be terminated after study. Description. SCP-874 is a black, largely unreflective fluid with 30.87 CP viscosity and reflectivity less than a tenth of that of water. When it approaches a static depth of 2 centimeters, the fluid functions as a portal to a seemingly infinite space. Tele telemetry into the abyss has led to no conclusive results as to its dimensions. Audio readings and personnel report the sound of distant grinding metal and stone from this portal. Occasionally, viewers in visual recording equipment can glimpse what appears to be immense rotating something, drifting aimlessly in the otherwise featureless blackness. Assuming, as evidence, zero gravity, an object propelled through the portal can travel approximately 3,000 kilometers before being totally obscured by the very light fog that fills the abyss. Objects partially lowered into the surface cannot be retrieved by any effort less than they recommended something thousand horsepower. Later experiments, those after March blank 2000-something, reveal that objects left in for more than five minutes are quickly worn away by invisible something. Disposable dudes who touched the portal reported that it felt like putting their hand in a cool bowl of water. They were unable to remove their limbs from the surface, reflecting the difficulty of extracting inanimate objects from the portal. The personnel claimed that it felt as though an array of wires were holding them in. Video recordings of the puddle show no change in the skin formation of these participants. After five, after five minutes expired, the limbs were severed, after which a later examination showed to be due to a large number of irregular shallow cuts. Uh, the first batch of personnel totally submerged in 874 was data expunged. The next sequence of experiments was conducted after the winch system was tested with non-living objects, which were safely retrieved if pulled up before five minutes of sub submersion. When the next group of personnel was retrieved with the harness, they reported data expunged, see document 9. Upon extraction, the group expressed elation and awe. Shortly after, they began to self-mutilate and exhibit violent and suicidal tendencies. Interview with Disposable 17549 Before you were extracted, what did you see behind the portal? Those eyes. Like they didn't care a bit. How beautiful. What eyes? Please explain what you saw, thir what you saw thoroughly. And their blank were like little knives! And how they played against each other! D17549, you are being uncooperative. If you do not answer the question I'm asking, you may you may have to suf suffer an early termination. Ah, yes, that would be nice. Please, ask away. What did you say? Wait, what did you say? Did you say nice? We saw quite a large number of data expunged. Now, I helped you. Will you help me? You aren't in any position to be making requests. I would very much like to see things the way that blank down there do. Just tell those men with the guns to put a bullet in me. They start bashing their uh, bashing his head against the desk. Doctor backs away from the table, tackles him, and is shot by security. Okie dokie, and that brings us to war criminals, which are which which which, which are safe. SCP-875 is to be marked on all maps as a military base, and all satellite images taken of the area are to be altered according to procedure Watson 24. Any civilians approaching 875 are to be brought into Foundation custody and dosed with Class A amnestic. After dosage, they are to be returned to the nearest city, uh, the nearest city to 875. Blank. 875 one string uh, stings are to be treated by on-site medical personnel using alkali prescribed in medical chart 875 1-1. In extreme cases, amputation of affected limbs is authorized. This sounds like it's some sort of terrible wasp. 
No research personnel are to enter 875 without an escort of two members of security. Six maintenance personnel are to be on duty in 875's reactor room at all times. The reactor is to be checked for breaches every hour, and the event of a breach is to be evacuated immediately. In the event of specimens of three becoming active, security personnel are to respond immediately and subdue specimens in a non-fatal manner. Specimens are then to be transported to Site Blank, where research staff will take over the operation. Description SCP-875 is an underground pyramid estimated to be blank thousand years old and located in the blank desert. Okay. No evidence of 875's construction exists in, our, in records from the period, although evidence suggests that it was man-made. The outer layer is made of regular sandstone, but possesses an inner layer composed of an as-of-yet unknown alloy. The first floor, accessible through the entrance tunnel, possesses the layout of a maze or labyrinth. Mechanisms contained within the floor and the walls of the maze alter the configuration of this floor every 48 hours. Notably, the hallways in this section of the structure appear to have been constructed with entities much taller than humans in mind. Several pressure plates and hidden levers are capable of op opening certain sections of the maze and releasing swarms of one. One are small flying insect-like creatures approximately 6 centimeters in length and 3 grams in mass. Their appearance bears no similarity to any known species, suggesting extraterrestrial origin. One possesses a highly acidic sting that has been observed to cause severe damage to nerves and tendons. Due to their swarming behavior, one attacks can and have resulted in complete liquefaction of limbs. Yeah. Due to the use of ex previous use of explosives, access to the second floor is not difficult, provided the breach location can be accessed in the maze's current configuration. The second floor of 875 is home to four large vats containing a liquid similar in appearance to water. This liquid will hereafter be referred to as 2. Exposure of humans to two results in effects similar to an amnestic, but with the addition of a sense of satisfaction and happiness. What appears to, to be maintenance tunnels lead down to the third floor, which contains a large nuclear reactor that takes up most of the level. This reactor appears to be self-cooling as it had not experienced meltdown in the period between 875's desertion and its rediscovery by the Foundation. Nevertheless, measures have been undertaken to monitor and maintain this reactor, which appears to power the machinery on the first, second, and fourth floors. Tunneling through the base of the third floor has revealed a small chamber containing what seems to be ten cryogenic stasis chambers arranged in a circle formation. Each stasis chamber contains a large insectoid creature roughly three meters in height and 240 kilograms in weight. Three specimens appear to have died and heavily decomposed through failure of the stasis chambers, and several of the specimens are heavily injured. These creatures are here are to be referred to as three. For further information on three's biology, see Autopsy 3-1. Image Analysis Analysis of several images carved into the walls of the first floor. Two figures, possibly three specimens, facing each other. One figure appears to be impaling the other with a spear. One figure identical to those in the first, facing a human in ancient Egyptian garb. Figure appears to be holding some, some manner of slab. The human figure is facing away from the first figure, perhaps suggesting an unwillingness to correspond. A large chalice with a, lob, a drop of liquid falling into it. Figure from the first image is standing next to two human figures who appear to be bowing to it. Figure from the first image watching two humans pulling a large square using ropes. Figure from the first image is standing next to what appears to be a deceased human figure. First figure appears to be consuming, data expunged. Figure from the first image inside a small rectangle, perhaps representing three stasis chambers. Classified O5 permissions required, let's confirm. On blank blank blank, the following transmission was intercepted, the source of which is currently unknown. The killers from war will return immediately. That there will be any negotiations. The implementation of these orders will be out or will be offered 95% of species extinct. Will be returned to the implementation of the following. It is hatred. Killed 33 who were not born yet and 7 others. That is, That it is pestilence. Killing 72 who were not born yet. Eating 5 who were not born yet. That it is death. Escape with the assistance of killers from war. That it is... After this point, the transmission quickly deteriorated and became unintelligible. Okie dokie. So, that about does it for this episode of Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the next episode, we'll be checking out Element Switching Pills, University Microchips, The Actor, Colonial Cetacean, uh, and Trapped Winter. So, if you liked it, a like and a subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you would need to do either one of those things, and I will see y'all in the next one. Later!